The Kayla DeVore era is underway in Tuscaloosa. What can we take away from Alabama's spring game yesterday? You had the White defeating the Crimson 34 to 28. It's just a spring game. You score how you want to score it. But when we look at you know the uh, the actual tape, we look at the resume of what some guys put out there yesterday. What does that say? And what does that make us feel about Alabama going into 2024? Going back to what I just said, it's a spring game. And when it's 11 on 11 football, you better believe on this show, on this channel, and me personally, we are as dialed in as possible to everything going on in the college football world. We love it that much. But we also understand it's practice 15. So you take as much as you can from something like this. You kind of take a little bit of a, of a temperature check and don't make any definitive statements. But still, man, you got football being played in Bryant Denny Stadium. Yeah, we're going to talk about it. We're going to have some thoughts. So make sure you're subscribed. Talk college football every single day on this show. If you've just now found this channel, if you just now found the show, The Hard Count, go ahead, subscribe. It's ball every single day. We're talking about a spring game yesterday. Yeah, we're uh, we're sickos for this, and we appreciate y'all being a sicko tuned in for it as well. So everybody and their mama was waiting and hoping to see some exciting things from the offense yesterday because Kalen DeBoer, that's his specialty that's kind of the the thing that he likes to specialize in and the Alabama offense I don't feel like disappointed in any stretch of the imagination was it perfect no again it's practice 15 they're still installing some things but when I watched that running back room get north and south man they're deep at that position group I don't know if that was a question mark for anybody but it definitely wasn't going out of there it's an exclamation mark in my opinion Jam Miller the MVP of the A-Day eight carries 83 yards two touchdowns he got downhill quick, fast, in a hurry. Definitive, decisive runner. I loved seeing that. That's what it takes in the SEC. You know, it's it's not a not a dance floor out there every Saturday when you're playing against the Georgias and going to be the Texases now. It's going to be, let's go and let's make sure we get our yardage here. And I think the question going into this era of the Kalen DeBoer offense was, well, are we still going to have that physical edge that we've had over the course of the last couple of seasons? Over the course of the last 17 seasons, really, with Nick Saban, like, that's kind of been their MO. We are the enforcers. We're the bully. We're going to be more physical than you. And Kalen DeBoer, God bless him, has specialized a little bit more with throwing the ball downfield. He's thrown the ball north of 40 times a game over the course of the last four years. That's been his average. Are we still going to have that physical edge by how they ran the football yesterday? I don't think that's going to be something that we just see in the spring game, and then we're like, oh, yeah, whatever, that's... You know, Bama did that in the spring game, but they were totally different during the season. I think he's going to use his personnel. And going back to what I just said, Jam Miller had a great day, but so did Justice Haynes from what I saw. So did Richard Young. Like, I think you're truly three deep in that running back room. That's exciting. There's going to be a physical edge now for the entirety of the season for Alabama based on what they have in that room. Jeremy Bernard looked like a true wide receiver one yesterday. Three catches for 122 yards. Made a nice contested catch early in that game. He knows this system. That's enormous. To have somebody who, one, is able to help the other wide receivers along and be able to teach them the nuances of the scheme. And then also for your quarterback, Jalen Milrow, as he starts to get comfortable, to have somebody that, again, knows the specific parts of this offense, specific parts of this playbook that a savvy veteran knows how to run, that helps your quarterback tremendously. To know maybe I'm going to sit this down a little bit earlier in, on this route. To know that, okay, I might I might break this off a little bit quicker. It, you know, typically we break it off at 10. I'm going to break it off at 8, Jalen, just, just so you know. This might hit a little bit quicker against this certain look. I understand it's the spring game, but having that there, that matters. It's nice for Jalen Milrow to have kind of that steady force out at wide receiver. Jalen Milrow, statistically, say what you want about the day. I thought he made some really impressive plays. Like, for it to be his first time running this offense in a game-like scenario, I just appreciated how quickly he played. Felt like he was making decisions definitively. It wasn't a whole lot of, you know, get to my second read, third read, scramble around a little bit. Can I look downfield, make a bad decision? Like, he was clearly operating within the confines of this offense, which was my original question coming into this game. We know what Ford can do when he tucks it and runs. How does he look isolated as a passer in Kalen DeBoer's system? Because Michael Penix Jr., is going to make a whole lot of money in the NFL here pretty soon. Did really well last year in Kalen DeBoer's offense and the year before that as well. Jalen Milrow and Michael Penix Jr. have very different skill sets. And I think Kalen DeBoer, in the way that they're going to approach it offensively in Tuscaloosa, when we sat down and talked with him last week, 
he was very transparent with us. He's like, yeah, of course we want to install our offense and have Jalen operate within the structure of that offense. But like Jalen Milrow is a one of one when he tucks in and runs, man. There's a reason why defensive coordinators lack REM sleep the night before they play Alabama a season ago because of his ability to tuck in and run. And so he needs to understand now he has to maximize that part of his game. We're not trying to change Jalen Milrow. We want to run our offense, but our offense also needs to mold itself a bit to Jalen Milrow in that same sense. And I can't help but feel this way, man. When I watch Jalen Milrow drop back and throw that deep cross somewhere between, I'm guessing it was like 15, 20 yards, Jeremy Bernard, probably the most exciting play of the spring game for my money, watch number four. I can't help but have this question in my head of how much can Kalen DeBoer improve Jalen Milrow? Because it's a new system, it's a new scheme, all that, but like we know what Kalen DeBoer does offensively. I think he's one of the best, if not the best, offensive mind in college football right now. You probably throw in Steve Sarkeesian into that conversation, probably throw Mike Novell into that conversation, Josh Heupel into that conversation. I'm not here to have that discussion. When you talk about the success and the progress that Jalen Miller, I think, could have under an offensive mind like Kalen DeBoer, that in itself is exciting. And I just, I'm going to be, be honest with you right now. Watching Jalen Milrow yesterday make a couple of those throws, I couldn't help but have this feeling of, well, what if Jalen Milrow makes a jump his second year as a starter in the SEC that is similar to that of a Jaden Daniels from year one to year two at LSU a season ago? Jaden Daniels, of course, made the jump to an Eisen Trophy. There's a lot of things that are different from what Jaden Daniels did at LSU from year one to year two to Jalen Milrow year one to year two. I mean, Jaden Daniels has two first round first two first round wide receivers playing for him. Jaden Daniels uh, played in the same offense from year one to year two. I understand that, but I'm just telling you now, from the skill sets and from the arm talent that a Jalen Milrow has, I don't think it's irresponsible to assume that a better play caller and potentially more confidence being a starter in the SEC for the second year in a row that could make a big difference. Can make a very big difference, but again, we're going to see how that whole thing formulates. It's the spring game. I'm not trying to get too ahead of myself, but it's hard to not get excited when you see him make throws like he did yesterday. The thing that I loved seeing from him, he was, I mean, he was fired up about something at the end of the game. I'm assuming it was a procedural deal or it was a execution deal, which he wasn't satisfied with from the offense. And there was kind of this thought coming out of Nick Saban's retirement of like, okay, well, that Bama standard's kind of been a you know, the stuff of lore over the course of the last 17 years. Bama's always held themselves to this extremely ridiculous way of doing things. It's why you see Nick Saban freaking out on the last couple of minutes of the national championship as they're about to win the whole deal, and it's not even close, but he's still freaking out about the center exchange and them having the right personnel in the game. Like, it's a little bit, uh, little bit next level with how they've operated. And the question was, okay, well, you remove the standard setter, from that operation, is there still that same maniacal approach? And again, it's the spring game, but seeing Jalen Milrow show that fire he did at the end of the spring game and look visibly upset, that to me told me a lot about, okay, I don't think Bama's getting complacent. Is Nick Saban still there? Does that matter a ton? Of course it does. Of course it does. Of course it matters that the greatest of all time is no longer on the sideline. But as long as Jalen Milrow is leading this football team, I don't think there's going to be any dip in the standard they have for themselves. So that should be encouraging from an Alabama fan. Now, the defense, I'll just be honest, I think it's tough to eval a defense during the spring for a number of reasons. Alabama, obviously, is breaking in a lot of new, really talented players. They bring back 33% of the production from a season ago. And again, at Alabama, unproven and new does not equate to not any good. It might at some places, not at Bama. You got guys like Zabian Brown, really highly touted out of high school. Delaney Jackson, another guy who's extremely touted out of high school, or extremely highly touted out of high school. Um, there's a lot of players that haven't seen the field to the degree they're going to this year that are going to make a big impact for Alabama. Um, Keon Saab, another new face from Michigan. Like, expect this defense to look different from this spring game than it does week one, and different week one than it does in week six. Like, the bottom line here is, This is a talented unit. I think they're probably going to add some more talent through the portal when that thing opens up. Uh, Allow this defense to piece it together, okay? 
overlook Alabama at your own cost is, I think, the sentiment I would say after watching that spring game. Is it the Nick Saban Alabama of old? No. But Kalen DeBoer is also 104-12 and as a head coach for a reason. Okay, he can coach some pretty darn good football, too, and Nick Saban did not leave that cupboard bare for him by any stretch of the imagination when it comes to the talent in Tuscaloosa. I think the offense is going to ho- operate at a really high level with Jalen Miller running the show. I think that defense has a lot of potential, and when it all comes together on both sides of the ball now, if they start playing complimentary football, all bets are off. And with that wider margin for the college football playoff, too, if Bama gets hot, they got a roster to really do some damage. And I mean, we'll see what happens in the postseason, but I would not be surprised in the slightest. And I think the folks at Tuscaloosa expect to be in that 12 team tournament when that time comes. So good day at the A Day. Fun to see the Kalen DeBoer era getting rolling in Tuscaloosa. Let me know your thoughts on Instagram and on Twitter. Get at me on there at JD Pakel. Tweet at me, DM me, all that. Let me know how you felt about the A Day. Curious to hear y'all's reaction because I thought it was just fun to see that whole thing get rolling. So make sure you're subscribed. We appreciate y'all. We love y'all. We're going to keep this party rolling and we will see y'all next time. Hey, y'all. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel here to make sure you don't miss an episode of The Hard Count. Also, be sure to check out other videos on the On3 YouTube channel.